Hello and welcome to the Locked On Oilers podcast. And guess what? The Oilers have clinched a playoff spot, baby. Well, not quite. We'll get into that and much more in today's episode. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Oilers. I am your brand new host, Brett Holden. I'm a former Oilers game day producer as well as a former news reporter, but I am here now for the Locked On Oilers podcast. I am here for you. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, we're on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, hello. How's it going? You can see uh, my busted setup. If you can see uh, over my shoulder here, my Elia Brzezgalov jersey won't stay uh, up on the wall too well. So, uh, hey, first episode, first, uh, you got to figure out some things early on. But in today's episode, the Oilers almost clinch a playoff spot. We're that close uh, in our victory over the LA or the da- Dallas Stars. I almost called them the LA Stars. The Dallas Stars uh, as uh, we get into that a little bit more. Plus, the Oilers may be dipping into the free agency pool already. Who are we looking at? Where are they coming from? And what would they look like in the Oilers lineup? We'll get to that as well. Plus, Finally, our first ever segment of the Prospect of the Week. And this prospect has not only won his team a national championship, but has also joined the Oilers organization. So there's a little bit of a tease for you there if you you haven't guessed who it is yet. Uh, We will get to that in a little bit. But first... Let's talk about the most important thing is uh, the Oilers almost clinch a playoff spot last night. We had that much closer in our 5-2 victory over the Dallas Stars. The Oilers are now 11-0-1 at home over the last 12. Uh, again, at home, starting dating back almost seven weeks now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks ago. Um, but again, the Oilers are that much closer to clinching a playoff spot. Realistically, we have but we're just waiting for it to become official. Uh, Looking at the standings here, the Vegas Golden Knights, Vancouver Canucks, and the Los Angeles Kings all have uh, four games left in their series. Excuse me, Vancouver has five. Vegas and uh, LA have four games left. The Oilers have five. So we are four points over uh, the LA Kings right now. We basically just need Vegas to lose one more game and Vancouver to lose one more game. And then it's basically done. We basically have that second spot hashed out. We're just waiting for it to be official. Uh, It is looking like we will play the LA Kings in the playoffs, but we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's look at what happened last night against Dallas as it started off very strong for the Oilers. Dallas may be a team that the Oilers play later on in the playoffs, depending how things go. Um, And the usual suspects for the Dallas Stars showed up, uh, but for the Oilers, not so much. We got a little bit of secondary scoring. In fact, uh, Dreisaitl nor uh, McDavid uh, reached the the goal portion of the uh, score sheet until the empty netter, of course, scored by Connor himself. Uh, First goal happened three minutes into the game, three minutes into the first period as Evander Kane, fresh off of his plane back from New York, after talking with the San Jose Sharks over his, his his contract um, demolition, however you, you, you explain him getting uh, axed from the uh, San Jose Sharks. Evander Kane scored his 17th of the season from Connor and Chris Russell. How about Chris Russell getting on the score sheet the last couple of games here? Chris Russell with a goal and now an assist here is sixth assist of the season. And Connor McDavid's 69th uh, assist of the season on Kane's goal. Then only three minutes and four. Five seconds later, Derek Ryan puts home his ninth from Ryan McLeod. Gets the assist there. Derek Ryan, Ryan McLeod, Ryan, Derek, 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 Derek Ryan, 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 Ryan. You get it? Sorry. Um, but like I said, the usual suspects were out to play for the Dallas Stars, and they were back here with Jason Robertson's uh, 
37th goal of the season. Excuse me, as Jason Robertson has now scored against the Oilers in all three games he's played against them this season. Uh, that was assisted by Rupe Hintz and uh, John Klingberg. And Rupe Hintz ended up scoring the tying goal in the second period, only five minutes in, as Jason Robertson got the assist on that. So the Hintz Robertson connection may be something to look out for for the Oilers in the future. But the Oilers stopped it there as uh, Zach Hyman scored his 25th goal of the season from Leon Dreisaitl and Evan Bouchard and then once more yes a boy RV baby the Bison King is back he's off the schneid 14 uh, his 14th goal of the season for Bush or uh, for uh, Pouli RV Bouchard with his 30th assist of the season and with those two assists uh, that does make him uh, give him 40 points on the season 40 points for Evan Bouchard only 10 away from 50 question mark um, but yeah, 40 points for Evan Bouchard, a quietly productive season for the kid here. Technically, I guess his first full season for the Oilers is last season under Tippett was kind of a love hate relationship between the two. Um, but now getting full minutes, full games, he's really showing off to be that top four defenseman that everybody expected him to be. Uh, and, and again, McDavid puts the icing on the cake uh, as he scores his, uh, well, 107th point of the season as he jumps over uh, uh, Jonathan Uberdo for the NHL league lead in points. Or excuse me, that was his third point of the season because he did, or of the game rather because he did get the secondary assist on pulley rv's goal so what does that all mean let's be honest here uh the oilers didn't look like a playoff well not necessarily a playoff team that didn't exactly look like a playoff performance for the Oilers as uh, realistically after the second goal Derek Ryan put in uh, six minutes and 17 seconds into the game, the Oilers just kind of started cruising and started going into uh, cruise control. It was, they did tie their season total for uh, shots on goal this season with 50. Uh, in the second period, the Oilers went from uh, 19 shots on goal after 20 to 44 shots on goal after 40. But uh, once again, after uh, 60, we only had 50 point or 50 shots. So uh, what exactly happened? It really did seem like the Oilers were just starting to coast around back into their own end, into a transition game. Now we're going to cycle. And while we did get 50 shots, it didn't really seem like we were forcing the issue on Scott Wedgwood. Scott Wedgwood seemed like he was skating in the net or swimming in the net rather sometimes. And I really think that if you start to pick him apart, and again, if you play him in the playoffs, start to pick uh, Scott Wedgwood apart, that may be an issue for the Dallas Stars. Uh, once again, really static for the Oilers in that uh, last half of the game. But Realistically, that's it's it's a good thing for guys like Brett Kulak, for guys like Cody Cece. If you look at those two, their games, they had great shutdown games for the Oilers. Uh, once again, we only need Vegas and Vancouver losses to officially ooh, we'll set off the party alarms. We'll say it um, to officially clinch a playoff berth and, cl berth and clinch a uh, home field home ice advantage uh, for the playoffs as well. So uh, no game for the Oilers today on the 21st, um, but the next time they are on the ice, they may honestly be already in a playoff spot. And then, why not call up Broberg, call up Niemelein, and call up the boys. Why not? Let's have them all play. Why don't call up Holloway? Bring them in for some NHL action. No, I'm just kidding here. But, uh, the Oilers power play going into the game against the uh, uh, Dallas Stars was 0 for 5. And after tonight, they uh, stuck to that 0 for as they uh, couldn't put home a power play goal tonight. But uh, the guy that the Oilers are looking to bring in in free agency might just help that power play a little bit more. I know every time we talk about a new player, how can they make that already beast of a power play better? But this guy might be able to do it. Uh, that'll come up in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglass company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, Lenses, well constructed durable frames, and premium high end finishes. 
Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Ray's insane protection program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. Uh, they will send you a brand new pair no matter what happens to, to your your sunglasses. Whether you sit on them, you throw them around, have a little party, you're at Coachella, you drop, you, you, someone steps on them. It doesn't matter what happened. They will uh, send you a brand new pair. Give them a try, and if you don't love them, you will pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Uh, plus, 10 meals are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, exclusively for the Locked On listeners, you can head to ShadyRays.com and use the code Locked On. All one word, Locked On, to get 50% off two pairs, uh, two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's Locked On, Locked On, Locked On. All one word. That is code locked on for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses, backed by over 150,000 five star reviews. Now, yes, let's get to the man of the hour that I have clearly uh, pumped up so much that you are really excited to hear about. Um, this new guy may end up being the Oilers' new puck handler, and uh, I am very excited to see him. His name, if you haven't seen his name already floating around the internet, his name is Andre Kuzmenko. If uh, you have seen a couple articles on him so far, plus Bob Stoffer recently tweeted about him unprompted because uh, Andre Kuzmenko, who is coming over, well, potentially coming over, um from Russia is represented by Dan Milstein, which uh, if you take a look at his client list has a pretty interesting client list. Uh, two of the players that he represents are Evander Kane, as we've already talked about today, and Matvey Petrov, uh, an Oilers prospect that's starting to gain a little bit of heat within the organization and a little bit of uh, traction between uh, fans as well. He just put up a Big season in Oshawa, and, uh, or in Oshawa, for uh, the battalion, rather. Uh, he just had a big season for them. But it's not about him. It's not about him. It's about Andre Kuzmenko, who's coming off of a very hot season in the KHL. He's 26 years old. In 45 games played for SKA St. Petersburg, he put up 20 goals, 33 assists, 53 points in 45 games. Now, you don't really hear that quite often from guys who are coming over from Russia, especially, or not even Russia, especially in uh, these European leagues. You take a look at guys like uh, Artemi Panarin, you guys, you took, take a look at guys like uh, Kirill Kaprizov, uh, Nikita Gusev. All these guys have had success in, in Russia and how have they been able to uh, translate it to the North American game. That is obviously going to be the issue for Kuzmenko, but when you look at his stat totals it you're very much hoping that it's not going to be too difficult of a uh, transition here for Kuzmenko he is a very fun player to watch you can find a lot of uh, 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 what's it called you can find a lot of footage on uh, YouTube uh, on him and all over the internet of, of what he can do he possesses the puck well he can hold on to the puck he can dance around with the puck and wherever he wants to put the puck he will put it there and uh, he's likes to work below the not the, no, well he likes to play below the the face off dots to be honest he likes to play between the boards and the face off dot the end boards and the face off dots and he really likes to cycle the puck on each end of the net he kind of honestly like Gretzky's office. He likes to sit behind the net and come on to one other, one of the side or the other and throw it in front of the net and find somebody in front. Well, if you take a look at the Oilers and the Oilers' power play, who's going to be out front? Well, I'll take your pick. Zach Hyman? Yes, a play RV. Uh, uh, Vander Kane? If I mean, if Kuzmenko's coming over here with Dan Milstein's representation, I'm sure that Evander Kane would be also staying with the Oilers. So if you're going to set up that Milstein uh, connection there, might as well happen on the power play for the Oilers. Um, 
He is very strong uh, with that puck underneath uh, uh, the goal lines there, but he can also shoot the puck into the zone. Well, at least I should say carry the puck into the zone. He really likes to dart through open ice and works his edge as well to get through and really attack that open ice. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're looking at the 96 of Kuzmenko's jersey, the back of that jersey. Like I mentioned, 53 points this season with uh, St. Petersburg. He's spent a couple uh, seasons with um, CSK Moskova, Moskova, uh, however you may say it. Um, kind of struggled there in uh, 34 games played. He had six goals, nine assists, 15 points, and in 45 games played the next season, 13 goals, 12 assists, 25 points. Then he went to St. Petersburg and started to have a little bit more uh, production, 19 assists his following season. Uh, Honestly, he's been pretty uh, consistent with his assists. Nineteen straight, uh, nine, three straight seasons rather with nineteen assists, and then this season with thirty-three. So really blew up this season and really started to get those eyes here. Another interesting thing to take a look at for Kuzmenko is how he performs in the playoffs. Once he started performing in the playoffs or started playing in the playoffs, his numbers actually really started to take a little bit of uh, a rise here. Uh, last season in 2021-2022 in 16 games played, 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. Uh, and a couple years ago, uh, this is this is the number that really jumps out to me. In 2016-2017 in the MHL, which is like the Russian equivalent to the CHL, the WHL, QMJHL, uh, OHL. Um, in 2016-17 with Karasnea, Armia, Moskva. I'm so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, in 13 games played, 11 goals, 13 assists, 24 points. Whoa. Whoa. That is... Hmm. 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 Hello there. Again, that's in playoffs. That's playoffs. That's that's when you're, you're looking at him and you may be looking at that stat and being, okay, he's playing against kids. Fair enough. But he's also being looked at at that point as being the guy, as being the guy that, hey, you're kind of older than these guys. Let's kind of get a little bit of a push. Let's make our team better. And he showed up and he really showed out 23 points, 24 points in 13 games. That is just crazy. But where does that put the Oilers? When you look at the the future of the Oilers and who we may be bringing in uh, in the offseason, you're really looking at that trio of Pulley RV, uh, Evander Kane, and Kyler Yamamoto, and you're like, how, how can we keep all three? How can we keep all three? And then now you're going to uh, toss in this Kuzmenko name. How are you going to keep all four? Well, uh, I crunched some numbers here, and uh, once again, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a um, uh, math guy. I went to art school twice. I uh, deliberately skipped math school or science school. Um, but I took I ta took a look at uh, the current Oilers roster, who is UFA'd, who is RFA'd, who might leave, who might be trade bait, whatever. And uh, as Bob uh, Stoffer mentioned on his show Oilers Now, he did mention that if you were to keep uh, all of Yamamoto, Puliarvi, and Evander Kane, you're going to have to do some finagling with some key pieces down, farther down uh, in uh, on the roster. And I think with... We, if we do read between the lines, that probably does mean Tyson Berry and uh, Zach Cassian do kind of see their ends as uh, or their tenures rather as Oilers end. Let's kind of take a look at the players that uh, might leave in the offseason. I only say kind of because this isn't necessarily what will happen, but what may happen. And in theory, of all the players that might end up leaving, we have Josh Archibald, Chris Russell, Kyle Turris, Colton Sevier, Cooper Marodi, Brendan Perlini, uh, Tyler Benson, Philip Berglund, Zach Cassian, Tyson Berry, uh, Miko Koskinen, Mike Smith, and Duncan Keith. Now, those are a lot of names. Those are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 names I just uh, rang off there. Realistically, about uh, seven of those names are more just kind of uh, uh, organizational guys. But the last few names there, Cassian, Barry, Koskinen, Smith, and Keith, are all regulars on the, uh, on the roster. And with all 13 of those players leaving, 
you could potentially see a free $26 million in cap space for the Oilers. $26 million in cap space for the Oilers. And that also doesn't include guys like Dylan Holloway, who may end up coming up uh, and being a regular for the Oilers next season. Uh, Raphael Lavoie, if he isn't included in a trade. Uh, don't think Xavier Borgo will, will crack the lineup next year, but he will be kind of uh, one of those names you may see cut late in the uh, camp. Uh, other names, Philip Broberg, uh, Marcus Niemelainen, Dmitry Samarukov, Stuart Skinner, all those guys may end up needing spots, and those are small contracts. You don't really need to worry about them. There is another guy in the organization who just signed his first technical professional contract uh, this week with the Edmonton Oilers organization, and we will get to him in this week's Prospect of the Week in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source of all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, uh, news, including this year's NHL hockey playoffs and the start of the MLB Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering uh, information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. And I'll be honest. I have been looking at Bet Online and looking. I just recently set up my account there, and I've been looking at uh, some of the Oilers' odds, and they may be putting down some uh, money there. Alrighty, let's move on to our final segment of today's show: the inaugural inauguration, inaugural show. Uh, the first time I heard inaugural was when the Edmonton Rush came to Edmonton, and I had no idea what it meant. So clearly, I still don't. But the first ever episode of uh, Locked On Oilers with me, Brett Holden. Thank you so much for joining in with me and making Locked On Oilers your first listen. And for the first ever time, the first Locked On Oilers prospect of the week, Carter Savoy. If, uh, Carter Savoy has been a name in the Oilers uh, organization since he got drafted. That has kind of had some, uh, well, let's be honest, not heat, but he's always had some sort of pull within the Oilers organization here. Uh, he is rather kind of a local boy. Uh, he did play for he, all of his NHL or NHL experience. Excuse me, my papers are flying everywhere. But all of his hockey career, especially the start of his hockey career, has started here in Edmonton. He played a couple years at the uh, Sherwood Park Crusaders in the AJHL, and he ended up going from the Crusaders to Denver, the University of Denver in the NCAA, with his best friend, and stop me if you've heard this name before, but with his best friend, Michael Bennett. Yes, Michael Benning, brother of Matthew Benning, and uh, Carter Savoy, brother of top NHL prospect in this year's draft, Matthew Savoy, playing for the Winnipeg Ice, uh, went to not only the Sherwood Park Crusaders together, but as well went to the Denver program there. It, two years at Denver, Savoy had really impressed. In his first five games at Denver, he had a five-game point streak, and uh, that continued throughout the year. In 24 games played for Savoy at Denver, 13 goals, 7 assists, 20 points for the kid, and his following year... This year, 2021-2022, has been his best season so far. Not statistically, but you take a look at the accolades that this kid has put up this year and it has been quite exciting. 39 games played, 23 goals, 22 assists, 45 points. Now, I say statistically that season's not too impressive, um, but, I mean, for college, it, it is very impressive. But uh, when you take a look at his Sherwood Park stats, it kind of makes sense why, how he got there. But first, let's 
take a look at what he did this season at Denver in the NCAA. In the Frozen Four, within just a week, he scored the game-winning goal against Minnesota Duluth to put them into the semifinals against the top one of the top teams in all of the nation in Michigan. But he ended up beating and scoring. It was a fluke goal, but he ended up scoring against future Oilers uh, prospect and ended up signing with the Oilers basically a day after the Minnesota Duluth uh, hockey team got eliminated by Carter Savoy's Denver uh, University of Denver team. And that's Ryan Fanti, the goaltender out of uh, Minnesota Duluth, had a hell of a season there. And he also had his first uh, AHL game last week for the Bakersfield Condors. Uh, so Savoy scores that goal against Ryan Fanti in Minnesota Duluth. And then in overtime, and I remember this so vividly because I remember trying to watch this on TSN and they ended up changing it to like third tier baseball. But. In overtime, Carter Savoy wins it against the Michigan Wolverines as the he would send the Denver University of Denver team into the final of the Frozen Four and crushing the hopes and dreams of reaching that final championship for the Michigan Wolverines is so many of those top draft picks from the recent seasons. Mackie Samuskevich, I know that's not necessarily the first name from that team, but uh, Mackie Samuskevich was on that team. Uh, Matty Beneers, the first two picks from this year's draft, Matty Beneers and Owen Power were on that team. Uh, you had tons of play players on that team, and all of a sudden, they're getting beat by the University of Denver? Yeah. And some little five foot eleven kid named Carter Savoy from Edmonton. Now, the seasons before Denver, uh, Carter Savoy did put up. In uh, 58 games played, he had 31 goals, 42 assists for 73 points. And that was his first game or first season in the AJHL. His second season? The season that helped them sign with Denver? Well, he was actually already signed to Denver after his first season. But just to kind of add insult to injury, in 54 games, so in four games less, Savoy put up 53 goals, 46 assists, 99 points. Almost putting up two points a game! What? And then he goes over to Denver and he does what he does there. Becomes one of the first, actually the first and only player to have uh, points in his first five games as a University of Denver player. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, his brother is Matthew Zavoy, who will be going in the top five of this year's NHL draft. So take a look for him. A guy that I was kind of hoping the Oilers would, would take a stab at. Same as Michael Benning. But uh, hey. We get Carter Savoy. As I said, he is our uh, prospect of the week because he signed his amateur tryout uh, for the Bakersfield Condor. So he will be with the team for the duration of the regular season and the rest of the regular season in the AHL. Plus playoffs for Bakersfield. Uh, tonight they uh, did play, or last night I should say, they did play uh, the Utica Comets. It didn't look like Savoy did get some time there. Or did, it did not look like uh, Savoy got time tonight. Or last night I should say. It is late. It is early. Whenever you're seeing this. But I want to thank you so much for uh, making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. And thank you so much for listening to my first ever episode as Locked On Oilers host once again. I know it's not about me, but thank you so much for making me feel welcome. And this is going to be only the first of many and first of many big things here at Locked On Oilers. Thanks again for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, uh, Locked On Oilers Fantasy Hockey, or excuse me, Locked On Fantasy Hockey. They may talk about Oilers, but... Uh, it's just Locked On Fantasy. Make sure Locked On Fantasy Hockey is your second listen. Host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy hockey league. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I have been listening because I just won one of my fantasy hockey leagues. Just kidding. I got third, but I'll take it. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe and have a good one. Peace.